Yes, miserable Monday or boost for households. Well, we're talking about that now. Business Minister Kevin Hollenrake, good to see you this morning. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you because you're here to talk about the cash boost to people on April the 1st. The households are going to be, on average, about £3,000 uh, better off. But, but how true is all of that when you actually look at many things that are rising today? We've got broadband and mobile phone bills up by 8%, council tax up by 5%, water bills up by an average of 6%. Is it Miserable Monday or is it actually all just doom and gloom? Well, I think it is really a good day for 2.7 million people, £1,800 a year better off if you're on the National Living Wage, so really good news. If you look at where the National Living Wage was in 2010, about £10,000 higher today and about 35% uh, increase, even after taking into account all those things you mentioned, inflation basically, so really good news. Yeah, I think I think the thing is, Kevin, people don't feel it. And you say it's really good news, but it's it's not enough to make a, a huge difference year on year uh, for people. I mean, you, you'll recognize it's tough. It's, it continues to be tough. You try and do what you do. But then people I think people complain a lot because they think they're giving us that back. But then they're taxing us in some other way. Well, I don't know about you, Eamon, but £1,800 a year is a lot of money for some people, £150 a month, so it will make a real difference for people. And, of course, it's tough. I, we understand that. That's why the government stepped in to about the tune of about £100 billion to help with cost of living support for things like energy prices and making sure people in lower-income households got extra £900 a year in their, in their accounts to try and help them through that difficult time. We understand it's been difficult, but things are improving. We'll see the economy turning a corner this year. We'll see interest rates dropping, taxes dropping, of course. £900 a year for the average uh, person in, in terms of tax reductions with the national insurance cut. So all those things are all good news to people. Of course, there's more to do, but things really are turning a corner. Well, and then you look broadband, mobile phone charges, council tax, water bills, the TV licence fee, uh, dentistry, uh, stamps, uh, vehicle tax. You know, uh, again, I'm not necessarily blaming you on this, but um, there, there is a lot for people to absorb and almost this, this money that you're talking yeah. about will be absorbed straight away. I don't, I don't think it's a case of that. It's in real terms, 35% increase in real terms versus 2010. And the most important thing we set out to do, that the Prime Minister set out to do, was to tackle inflation, which is driving some of those price increases. If you remember, just over a year ago, inflation was over 11%, 11.1%. It's down today just over three and a, about 3.5%. And by the end, of, within a few months, according to the Office of Budget Responsibility, we're back to 2%. That's, that's months ahead of when it was supposed to get to that level. So we are seeing things turn around in terms of moderation of price increases. But crucially, this really big increase in the national living wage which is, is a massive boost to lots of people. We've got one of the highest national living wages now in the developed world so really really good news for a lot of people. It's part on the back of our, our, uh, our commitment to get a higher wage, higher skilled economy and, and, and this hasn't cost jobs. 4.2 million more people in work than there were in 2010 and 1.2 million fewer people out of work. So really good news all the way around. Mm, I'll tell you what isn't good news. It's that long waits in A&E are killing 250 people every single week. These are new figures compiled by the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, which is out today. It's on the front page of many of the newspapers. Shocking statistics, Kevin. People are needlessly dying in this country every single week. What's your reaction to that story? Yeah, I mean, it's not what you want to see at all, but we are seeing progress. We put a record amount into the NHS. There are now 110,000 more doctors and nurses working in the NHS than there were back in 2010. Real terms increase in funding in the NHS since to the, over the last five years, but you've seen this rising demand, you know, an 8% rise in demand in terms of attendances and admissions into the A&E. These are, these are, it's a demand-side problem, and it's the same in every corner of the United Kingdom and in other countries as well. So we we'll Putting those extra resources in, but of course there is huge pressure on the system. Yeah, the system, Kevin. Um, I mean, if if you were to be returned in the general election, the system is something you'd have to continually look at, adapt, and change. Do you think there is one big thing that we will have to get used to in the NHS so that we have to tweak uh, to make it more efficient? 
Of course, we need to make it more efficient, and we've got a, a plan for that. But but the, the, most of the problems in the NHS are caused by increased demand, and and the reason one thing that's driving that is we're all living longer, and our, our treatments are more comprehensive, more costly. So we have to con- continue to put more and more resources into the NHS. But you're right to say we want the service to be more efficient as well. But we are seeing those extra resources, and we've seen the backlog caused by COVID, of course. But again, on top of that, you've seen the two-year waiting lists have been eradicated. 90% of the people waiting 18 months or more for for operations have, have been those have been eradicated too so we are getting on top of it but it's tough and we've seen strikes over the last year which haven't helped but um, but we will get on top of this but we have got a demand side problem and we will have for some years to come your childcare support package is starting to be rolled out today. We're talking to the Labour Party a little bit later on. Uh, they're saying that this is a childcare pledge without a plan, saying that many nurseries are forced to go bust because they're not able to actually expand uh, their offer. And they're saying you're threatening to crash the childcare system with this plan. Well, this, again, this is really good news. It's 15 hours a week of childcare for, for parents of two-year-olds, and that goes down to nine months over the next year and rolls up to 30 years, uh, 30 hours a week. Really, really good news. Helps to lots of households. It co- it's worth about £6,900 to the average household. Really good news. We're confident the places are there. Clearly, it's a private sector thing again, so the private sector will expand for, to, uh, to offer these places. But uh, quite surprisingly, Labour have failed to to uh, meet our commitment or say they will meet our commitment in terms of that childcare offer but we, we absolutely think it's the right thing to do it's good for working households it's good for people's average earnings and it's good for the economy so all round it's the right thing to do that's the business minister kevin hollenrick mr hollenrick thank you for your time this morning appreciate it thank he you very says, much thank you